Welcome, precious viewers, to the conclusion of a two-part series on science and spirituality featuring the fascinating work of Jason Martell. Mr. Martell is one of the world's leading independent researchers and lecturers on ancient but seemingly advanced technologies, as well as early civilizations' interactions with beings or extraterrestrials said to have descended from the skies. He has spent the last 15 years researching this topic through written records, artifacts, and other materials showing evidence of humankind's activities in the distant past. He is the author of Ancient Alien Artifacts, Visual History of Ancient Astronaut Research, and Knowledge Apocalypse, Ancient Astronauts, and the Search for Planet X. In addition, Mr. Martell has appeared on TV channels such as Discovery, Sci-Fi, and the History Channel. We begin with Jason Martell discussing some items that have appeared on the History Channel's program, Ancient Aliens. What I'm going to do is focus on a couple of artifacts that, that uh, gained a little bit of attention recently. Uh, some of them you might have seen, Ancient Aliens. One that I'm working on now is uh, called the Antikythera Mechanism. Sponge divers in 1901 off the island of Antikythera found this device that, when doing radar on it, shows that it has over 72 cogs and wheels. It's more complicated than a modern-day Swiss watch. It's an ancient computer. We don't know who built it down at the bottom of the ocean. It's probably being used for two things. It was an astronomical device, so someone sailing on the seas could use this as a navigation beacon plotting certain stars. It was also an astrological device so that it could tell you you're born on a certain date and you line up with Jupiter and Mars and so here's some information about you on an astrological level. So it had an astronomical and an astrological purpose. It's a very interesting piece of technology that we don't attribute to ancient man being able to architect something like this. There have been recreated versions of it where it actually does function and all the gears turn and it marks specific pieces of time as the device operates. Uh, it's about 2,000 years old. Ancient Egypt is one of the most impressive civilizations in history. After thousands of years, the Great Pyramids still proudly stand tall today against the azure Egyptian skies, instilling awe and wonder among visitors. One can only imagine the engineering feats involved in its grand architecture. To scientists, these pyramids raise more questions than answers. Another puzzle in Egypt continues to cause debate among researchers. The wall carvings in the Temple of Hathor in Dendera, located several dozen kilometers north of Luxor, depict ancient Egyptians holding what seem to be light bulbs. Did the Egyptian people of the past actually use electrical devices for illumination? Jason Martell has researched this question. Here is a, a, another interesting piece of uh, technology that's found in Dendera, a place in Egypt. These specific wall reliefs show what can be interpreted as an ancient light bulb. It almost looks as if they're holding up some type of large device that has a filament going through it, and you can see it's actually connected to some type of a power source. So throughout Egyptian hieroglyphs, that the device is shown in many other instances as being a, a symbol of power. Mainstream science might not accept that the Egyptians had electricity, but the science points to this being possible. Now, modern Egyptologists say that's not a light bulb. The aroma of a flower and that bulb that you see is the, is the aroma of the flower. I question that because of the fact that all these deep recesses and crypts and tombs in Egypt have very intricate wall reliefs, hieroglyphics, carvings, and you would need significant light to do that. Yet there's no evidence of flame or soot on the ceiling from a burning flame. So if they weren't using a torch in ancient Egypt to light these crypts, mainstream science says the only other thing they were doing was using copper mirrors to reflect light. And that doesn't hold up. There's no way that the light can reflect far enough down into some of these crypts. And in this crypt in Dendera, Egypt, it shows them holding light bulbs. And it even explains that Dendera is the light-giving source. So if they did have electricity, they're clearly illustrating the, the use of a light bulb to do all their hieroglyphs. Now, if you have the bulb, you're going to need a power source. So it turns out that same epoch of time, 2500 BC roughly, 
we find something called the Baghdad Battery. There's been about a dozen of these found in ancient Iran. And what they are is just a simple clay pot with a, a copper filling and an iron rod down the center. And if you fill it with any type of weak acidic uh, liquid, vinegar, grape juice, and you put a voltmeter on it, you can actually generate a charge. I brought the Baghdad battery as a replica here. I did a test for that on the History Channel, and it actually did generate four positive volts with just that little cylinder right there. By looking deep into humankind's history, Mr. Martel is shedding new light on our role in the universe. Till this day, modern science is still unable to provide answers to the mysteries surrounding the creation, purpose, and significance of many giant-sized stone structures scattered around the world. There have been a plethora of different devices and pieces of technology found around the world. I don't know that I can even put a specific number on it because there's different classifications of artifacts and technology. Some of them are in tablet form, some of them are in pictogram form, some of them are in artifact form, but the ones that I find most interesting are the architectural alignments. Baalbek in Lebanon, uh, Giza, Nazca, Machu Picchu, all over the world there are these megalithic monuments and most of them have alignments based on astronomical stars that they line up with over time, these repeat, and these, these alignments take place again. How were they able to build such unbelievably large stone edifices that are aligned to astronomical points in time and space? That I think is very intriguing, and I don't think we fully understand how it was able to be done, but it's all around the world. Every culture has these megalithic monuments. Many of the ancient cultures seem to have the ability to quarry and move megalithic sized stones, stones that weigh hundreds of tons. We have no device, no crane, no laser cutting tool today that can lift these megalithic monuments. Some of the megalithic monuments around the world were built in a way that we still can't understand with modern science. Some of these stones have been quarried and taken several miles and stacked perfectly, and the size of these stones is, is not anything that we can possibly do or replicate today. As an example, in Baalbek in Lebanon, there are these trilithoton stones, stones that weigh hundreds, hundreds of tons, and they're stacked perfectly to form this very large platform. The massive foundation stones of a temple found in the ancient city of Baalbek in eastern Lebanon have bewildered archaeologists for years. These colossal stones, estimated to weigh somewhere between 800 and 1,200 tons, are the largest cut stones known in the world. However, our 21st century machinery would not be able to move the gigantic blocks or stack them. Some legends credit the astonishing megalithic craftsmanship to giants who once roamed the Earth with humans. And ancient astronaut theorists suggest that Baalbek was a landing area or spaceport for extraterrestrial spacecraft. And then over time, other cultures have come and built their cities and civilizations on this platform. But the original purpose of this platform, there are many stories that speak of the gods ascending and descending using this place they called the landing place. It's literally a large landing platform. A lot of the architecture used in these monuments raises a lot of questions. Some of them are so perfectly fit together, almost like a laser, to cut these shapes out of the rocks. They're so finely in precision, and we still can't duplicate this technology today. We asked Jason Martel for his view on how ancient civilizations were introduced to advanced technology. I think it's possible that a lot of the ancient cultures speak of a time when they were visited by beings from the heavens and gave them sacred knowledge. Now again, modern academia says that this is mythology. We have no evidence to say that beings from other worlds came and visited ancient man. But the evidence does exist to say that there was some type of technology given, some type of knowledge given to man. Now if it wasn't solely from extraterrestrials, it's also very possible that we've lost this knowledge. There's a much larger scale of time that a lot of the ancient cultures were aware of. As we rotate on our axis night and day, 
there's an astronomical effect there taking a place on us. It's an astronomical uh, effect that affects humanity. The ancients said that there was another cycle of time that will affect us. It's based on the precession of the equinox. That's why we divided the heavens into 12 parts and assigned them zodiacal symbols, because there's a cycle of time repeating on a much larger scale, 24,000 years. Ancient cultures were aware of this and knew that as we go through this cycle of time, we come in and out of heights of technology. So it seems like we're just now starting to rediscover things like the Mayans and various other cultures that built their monuments, alignments with constellations to mark this journey on this 24,000 year cycle of time. And that's just a little bit hard for us to grasp since it's well beyond our current lifespan. Our appreciation, Jason Martell, for taking time from your busy schedule to share your amazing research. May you continue to unravel the many technological secrets of the ancient world and help us better understand our connection with the rest of the universe. For more information on Jason Martell, please visit www.xfacts.com. Books and DVDs by Mr. Martell are available at the same website. Thank you for your company on today's program. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News here on Supreme Master Television. May we all strive to bring about a truly peaceful and harmonious planet. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.